Thank you for joining the Tape Takes on Mass Storage presentation. We came here last year and gave a presentation <coughs> talking really about where are the future of tape technologies going, more from a tape library perspective, how we're building new intelligence into large storage systems to be able to accommodate and track towards the same kind of rates that um, the high performance computing and processor market is really tracking. Since then, there's been a lot of really interesting developments in the tape market. And that's where I'm going to focus most of the day today is talking about what's happened in the last 12 months since we were here at Supercomputing last November. Um, and we'll be looking at what we're going to be doing as a tape industry moving into the next really good three to five year period as you're looking at how you're architecting your data centers and your supercompute environment. Let you know what we're doing on the storage side to help track to that. And looking at today's agenda, you'll have seen this in um, the agenda that you have in your um, conference guides. Mass storage expectations are changing pretty quickly. What that's leading to is data growth that this was predicted by IDC a couple of years ago, that by 2011, 1.8 exabytes of data would be created in the digital universe. Looking at the amount of storage that's out there in the world, there's actually not enough storage created in the world to hold all the data that's being created in the digital universe. What the storage vendors are having to work on and really focus on into the future is how can we take advantage of storage more effectively? Certainly, users need to figure out how are they going to parse their data and decide what they're going to keep and what they're not going to keep. But in the scientific research community, in a lot of cases, being able to keep most of your valuable research data is critical. So having storage systems that have the capability to compress, to optimize, to continue to grow, not just this year or three years from now, but really five to 10 years from now, is where you need to be getting the commitment from your vendors that we're going to be able to continue to track with you in the HPC market. The software capabilities have been evolving this year. I'm not going to spend much time on this today because we only have 30 minutes and we will run out of time if we try to talk about how software is evolving to handle tape. But just to give you a feel for what kind of applications are out there that are really changing the way they can handle tape storage. And tape storage is becoming, as you'll see, a much more critical primary storage medium for a lot of our archive data. The software market is evolving to put standard file systems in front of tape libraries so that, that now when you put data onto your um, tape storage, you don't have to have it in a proprietary format or you don't have to have it in some kind of backup file or tar type of format, but now you can lay your standard file systems in front of it. That may be NFS or SIFS for a small environment, it may be GPFS or some really large parallel file systems in the bigger environments. All of them can now lay on front of, in front of your high density archive storage for your tape and your disk behind a single large file system, making it easier for you to have a big target for your data storage. The metadata search capabilities are dramatically improving as well. The, just keeping a big pool of data certainly isn't enough. Having it sitting on tape, you still need to make sure that it's searchable, queryable, you can ensure the data integrity, both through the software application as well as the hardware application. And there's a lot of things that the software market is continuing to evolve to do in that space. I'd be happy to talk with you more about that um, in our booth or afterwards if you want to contact me by email. It's a pretty interesting market that we could spend a whole hour just talking about that. <laughs> but in looking at what's happening with tape today, the published LTO roadmap came out on April 14th of 2010. So this was one of the big de developments this year that last year at Supercomputing, we only had a published roadmap through LTO 6, which would have put us to about 2012 or 2013. Most of you are planning storage systems that expand well beyond 2013 and really closer to probably that 2018, 2020 kind of time frame that you need to know um, how you're going to scale your storage capacity to match your increasing compute capabilities. That was one of the big developments this year that not only did we start shipping LTO5 and it met the spec requirements for throughput and capacity that was committed to from the LTO consortium, but we published that roadmap that goes on through LTO7 and LTO8 now. What that gives you is um, capability to be certain that your tape capacity will continue to double every generation for the next um, 10 to 12 years is what it's committed to. There aren't dates on when LTO 6, 7, and 8 will come out, but we expect it will come out every two to three years, and you'll have that double capacity in your storage system. What SpectraLogic will commit to our customers and have committed for several years now is the tape systems that you buy today or the storage systems that you have in your, deployed already in your environments 
We've committed that we will continue to upgrade those through LTO8 and we'll continue to offer, um, not only will we continue to offer support contracts, but we'll do support contracts at a fixed rate that we won't increase support pricing beyond a certain maximum year over year. What that gives you is that investment protection that once your storage is put in place, you're not going to end up three or five years down the road wanting to upgrade and having an uh, end of life roadmap or having support contracts become un unavailable or so expensive that it's more realistic, just realistic to just do a technology upgrade. The second thing de development this past year on the tape market, if you guys didn't read it, it's a pretty interesting bit of research. It came out of the IBM labs in Zurich. They proved on a bench that they can make 35 terabyte tape. What that really means, it's a long ways in advance, um, it's coming out of the pure R&D side of the tape technology, but what it proves is one single tape cartridge can get to the 35 terabyte recording that's <coughs> like uncompressed, so 70 terabytes compressed. What that really proves to us is while we've only committed to releasing through LTO8 so far as an industry, we're nowhere near some kind of physical limit on the capability to continue to add additional capacity to tape. There's concerns on disk, on aerial density, um, a lot of the magnetic and heat effects of the disk drives that are being created today. How far can that capacity increase continue? What this 35 terabyte tape proved to us is that the tape industry has a long ways to go and has the capability to continue to evolve, just like we're seeing X by exascale compute systems evolving in the future. Um, just to give you a feel for how big that is, um, I, saw, I was reading this article this morning since I was going to be quoting it, and it's 44 times larger than the LTO4 tapes that are available today. So 44x proven capacity increase is pretty impressive and something that just came out last year. And then the last big development in the tape market through um, 2010 was the development of something called the Active Archive Alliance. This came out of feedback from the show last year here um, up in Portland. And what we realized was a lot of users in the really, hard, in the really large um, national labs, the really big sites in both the HPC and the really big sites in broadcast, know that it's now possible to lay a file system in front of tape, to do metadata search and query against tape. A lot of the rest of the users weren't aware how affordably that could be done, that it could be done in an open systems environment. It didn't require you switching off of Linux, for example, that you can use Linux, you can use the file systems you're using today, and take advantage of laying a standard file system in front of your tape storage. We started to get together the industry and talk about what can we do to educate more about this evolving market and what became clear was the tape drive folks spent a lot of time talking about the tape drive roadmap, the tape library folks talk a lot about the tape library mode roadmap, and then the software folks are over here talking about the things that they're doing to take advantage of tape. And we weren't really all coming together and working together on who should do what, um, who should do data integrity verification, who's responsible for <coughs> in band encryption, who's responsible for um, metadata searching, is that the file at the, the folks who are doing the file system, or is it a different application? There was a lot of questions that ultimately our users were having to sort out. They were having to piece and part the, all the different pieces together. You couldn't Google for a specific solution. If you went to IBM or Spectrologic or Biotech, you would get a different answer on what the best practices were. So this was a problem that the Active Archive Alliance is pulling together to solve. It's to, um, from a basic perspective, educate the market on the capabilities of how to manage your archives in a, in a more effective way. It's helping you to see what can you do much, much more affordably than you were in the past, where perhaps you're having to continually add disk systems or when you moved data off to tape, it was in some kind of proprietary format, then you had to delete it off your disk and it became a highly manual process. There's a lot of evolutions, I'll talk a little bit more about this as we move forward in this presentation, that the Active Archive Alliance was founded to address. It is a third party, non-profit organization that um, I believe nine members are part of now, and we have several others that are about to sign up here in December once we get through the trade show season push. And we're going to be taking it um, out to Europe more broadly. Um, we're working on a best practices document to help give a Q&A that people can reference on the best ways to implement an active archive. And we're starting to work on intercompatibility, setting some standards on interconnect, um, setting some standards through both SNEA, um, possibly even looking at talking to IEEE on the standards for these archives on how do you do data migration? How can you be certain that 
you haven't lost any data in your archive. Some of those questions that peer archivists, and I know some of you in this room are peer archivists, ask these sorts of questions and are really grappling with them as well. We're working together on the vendor side to put together the right tools for you to solve that problem, and certainly working with the archivist community to make sure we're solving the correct problems. If you're interested in more about Active Archive, the website is activearchive.com, and um, there's lots of white papers and videos and information out there about that.